What's up guys? Happy New Year. I want to wish you all a very successful and prosperous New Year with women and all of your other life goals in 2019. It's going to be a really, really big year. I'm really excited about this. I'm kind of redirecting a lot of my focus that was on women and drinking for the past decade into growing my YouTube channel, expanding my brand, getting my products scaled up, etc., etc., and getting my material in front of as many people as possible. So that's going to be the, the main effort and goal uh, moving into 2019. I'm utilizing this new little nighttime <laughs> bright little ring thing that someone suggested to kind of light me up a little bit more. Um, in terms of a quick note on my setup, so I do have a really nice DSLR camera and a professional lavalier mic and due to laziness in the past and you know large file sizes and having to edit them down and all this shit, I've just kind of resorted to using a webcam in the in the recent months. But I'm going to be going back to the DSLR camera and doing outdoor shit and a bunch of environments and stuff like that. Um, the webcam will still be used on Sunday nights on the Facebook, or, sorry, the YouTube Live, which will be 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific Time, every Sunday. Um, basically, and ask me anything. All your questions about game for the week, come on there, type in the chat, and they will be answered. So. But to remind you guys, moving forward, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, new content every week. And I'm going to try to expand that actually into to four or five days of content, but starting off with three. And then the Sunday YouTube lives. So the topic of this video, I want you guys to put in the comments below, right below this video, um, what are your goals for 2019? So I'm making this on January 1st, 2019. Um, for those of you that haven't been keeping up with me lately, I just hit a thousand lay counts, thousand new girls. And the contacts in my phone right around the same time hit 10,000. And I've stated in other videos, the close rate at an extreme advanced expert level is 10%. So I'm running a, a WhatsApp group mastermind and a lot of the guys keep saying, how do we handle rejections? How do we handle flakes? Blah, blah, blah. And the way you deal with that is just by being realistic about this game. Okay, flakes are part of the equation on a regular basis, on an almost even daily basis. Um, cancellations happen regularly. Rejections in a, in a nightclub or in a daytime environment happen regularly. I don't do much daytime pickup. I focus more on nighttime and then online stuff with Tinder and with seeking arrangements, stuff like that. But for those of you who have heard of Paul Jenka, he's now married in London and retired from the game, etc. Um, Paul was a high volume day gamer in New York City and we were chatting. And I was like, what was your close rate? Like, cause you were doing a, a shitload of approaches and blah, blah, blah. Like how many of those girls were you closing? He's like, from those I got a phone number from, it was around 10%. I was like, fuck yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. His, his total count is much lower cause you know, day game number closes are, are at a much slower rate than night game number closes and Tinder matches. I think he topped out maybe around 200 or something like that. Or I don't know. I think for, for, he reported somewhere that he hit like 130 or 140 with the majority of his his day game career. But um, that being said, these are like, he's a top guy. I'm a top guy. 90% of those phone numbers aren't going to convert. So you need to start looking at this in realistic terms. Okay. I, I did uh, door to door sales last year for the summer, not for financial reasons, but I wanted to learn new insights into game. And I stated a long time ago on a bunch of videos from last year that I was able to become, I, I hit the rank of number one salesman. This was for a company called Vivint. They sell smart home systems and, and home security systems um, in the US, I think in other places as well. But I was able to be the number one salesman in terms of um, amount of sales on the 4th of July. Was it 4th of July? Yeah, the, yeah 4th of July um, in the US out of the rookies, but there were, there was like 3000 new rookies and it was my first summer doing door to door sales. And to be honest, I was blowing off most of the days to spend time with chicks and blah, blah, blah. Like I wasn't really giving it that much of an effort, but that day I kind of buckled down and I even took a two hour break that day to go bang a chick and come back. And I was still able to hit the number one salesman spot for the, out of the whole company and the whole out of 3000 people. And the reason for that is a lot of the principles of building rapport and answering objections, et cetera, are similar to game building compliance. And I had perfected that craft over the past decade with pickuping with game. But 
the reason I bring that example up is because most doors you knock, the people are like, sorry, I'm not interested. Or you give them your little fucking pitch and they're still not interested. But you can earn hundreds of thousands of dollars in one summer with that company just as a salesman. Obviously, the top execs and the people that run the company are making a shitload more. Just as a salesman earning commissions, you can fucking clean up. Like literally, I have a buddy, the, the buddy that brought me on board and he thinks my game system is like very similar to Jordan Belfort's straight line persuasion system from the dude from the Wolf of Wall Street. Just moving things forward and then when there's an objection or a deviation, I know how to bring it back and move it forward again. But he brought me out of that company for the summer to help him with sales and he's consistently earning a couple hundred grand per month, or sorry, per summer. And that's four months out of, the, out of the year and then he just takes off the other eight months. But him and myself, even though we were doing very well and, and we're operating at, at the top of the pack, we're mostly getting rejections throughout the day. You get a sale or two a day. On 4th of July, I hustled a little harder and I, I think I had like six or something like that. Um, but, and they're like $5,000 systems that are getting put in. But um, most, the, the common state of affairs is a rejection. And to be able to handle a rejection gracefully and not get deflated or not get upset or not take it personally or not go into this negative spiral is a real, real, real important part of this game. So what I've noticed in my mastermind, these guys, and I, I've seen it from my live program teachings as well, these guys take a rejection and they get deflated. Now, if you haven't seen the video on state, debunking the myth of state on my channel, watch that. Um, I, will, I will put a link to that at the end of this uh, if you're using the desktop version of the app to basically click at that at the end. But I talk about like RSD, real social dynamics, they teach the concept of state. They say like, you need to go into a club, you need to do a bunch of throwaway approaches, build up your state, and then you can do real approaching because now you're at your real operating potential. But then if you get a bunch of rejections, these guys are going to the state crash, but that's all in your head. My game and what I teach guys in my product and in my live trainings is that your state is always at 100. Okay, so that means when you walk into the nightclub, you're operating at your full potential. Your first approach, which is often the first set that I take home, or it's already going really well if I'm getting a phone number, is because I'm going in there, I'm the man, I'm the shit, I'm the highest value guy here, I'm bringing a lot of value to the table, I have a lot to offer, etc. If I see a girl during the daytime, there's no time to warm up and build state, okay? I bring my A game because I'm an alpha male at all times, not just when I'm getting into state. So. The reason why I bring that into this discussion is because when you have a rejection, either in door-to-door -door sales or at the nightclub or during the daytime, it's not like this big deflation. Like I know statistically and with the data and all this stuff that most sets are going to be rejections. That doesn't mean I go in expecting rejection, just the opposite. I go in expecting the girl to love me, expecting to like me, expecting her to be really into me. And then if she's not into it, it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of like a little blip. Just like at the at the door when I'm doing a, a knock, a cold knock with the sales, if they're not into the product, or they're, or they're like a lot of people just like literally like will open the door, they see the dude in a fucking uniform and shit, and they're just like, no, thank you, get out of here, and they just close the door. You could be the number one salesman in the world, and that's still gonna happen to you. Being a top pickup artist in the world, if I go up to a chick and she's like, no, fuck off, or she's just like full ignoring me, it doesn't matter. And you need to realize there's so many things out of your control. She could have a boyfriend for real and not just be lying. She could be in a terrible mood. She could be, have already approached by a whole bunch of guys and is just like kind of over it for the night. She could be just out to spend time with her friends or to catch up with an old friend and to not deal with all the socializing. Maybe you approached a week, who cares, et cetera, et cetera. So without dwelling too much on that, stop letting rejections bother you. Don't let them cause this quote unquote state crash, because most of that is in your mind. I talked about in the state video. <clears throat> if you are subscribing to the notion of state and you think that your game is dependent on that, it's mostly you're involved in a self handicap. And that's really fucking terrible because you are your own worst enemy. You are getting in your own way. Okay. I can't tell you the number of times where I've had three, four, five, six, even more rejections in a row. And then you roll up on a nine that is into it and feeling it. And if I, if I came in like defeated because of a string of rejections, or I came in doubting myself because of a string of rejections, that particular nine is going to be not into it. If I got 
you know, rejected at a bunch of doors when I'm doing door-to-door sales. And then I, I roll up on a person that's maybe very in need of an alarm system or has been thinking about it for some time and they just need a little bit of a push. And I come in and I'm like, hello, uh, blah, blah, blah. Like, would you like to buy this thing that I'm very unsure of? And I think you're probably just going to say no. So just tell me no. And the people pick up on that and they're not going to fucking buy. And the girl in the nightclub picks up on that. And that same girl that would have banged you is now going to tell you like, sorry, have a nice night. Like she doesn't want to bang some dude that's not sure of himself. that's not confident that is resorting to these beta mindsets and resorting to these defeatist mindsets. So kind of went off on a big tangent there, but I think it's very important to note that for 2019, as you guys go do all your approaches, the close rate is 10% for the top guys. Okay. One in 10 of the phone numbers you get, that doesn't even count the girls that blow you off. Like I have 10,000 over 10,000 contacts, on my phone, a thousand and eight <laughs> closes it's sounding really fucking weird at this point since it's in four digits now. And just be realistic that, but, but paradoxically, you want to assume that every girl will like you, that every girl will close. That you can get any girl you talk to that may be delusional. I mean, it, it's clearly delusional given the statistics, but you have to bring that mindset to the table. Okay. Because if you bring anything less than that mindset, the girls will pick up on it. The girls have been evolutionary hardwired, evolutionarily hardwired to sense any kind of beta ness or weakness. Okay, even if it was involved in animal tribes, the like orangutans, for instance, you'll have an alpha male that fucking leads the group. He fucks all the chicks and the chicks could fuck any one of those beta follower dudes in the tribe, but they don't. But they will sneak off from the tribe and go fuck other leaders of other groups behind the alpha dude's back. And the alpha dude will like fucking kill them or kill the other dude if he, if he finds out. But I, I've watched documentaries about the chicks sneaking off to bang these other alpha dudes. They respond to alpha behavior. Be the alpha guy, okay? Don't be the fucking guy that's walking in the nightclub like, oh, I usually get rejected, I never get laid. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna do my approaches and probably get rejected and probably not get laid, but I'm just gonna do them. No, you're ready. Don't you, if that is your mindset, don't fucking go out until you can fix that and, and think you're the shit and think you're awesome, okay? And most of you, I know this, this is also statistics. Most of you have a lot more shit going on than these hot girls. I've dated a lot of these hot girls. I'm not saying all hot girls are pieces of shit, but a lot of them are single moms. A lot of them have no uh, higher education. A lot of them can't even fucking spell correctly. A lot of them have no ambition and, and, no, and no success because Western civilization has engineered them to just be fucking like dumb slut pieces of shit. Like that doesn't, I'm living in Eastern Europe now that doesn't exist as much here. A lot of the girls speak multiple languages. They have multiple degrees. They have, you know, family values and all this shit. A lot of these Western hot chicks are they have nothing going besides their looks and their looks are going to fade and expire and they're fucked and they're going to marry some beta dude that can provide for them and they're going to cheat with an alpha dude and the alpha dudes won't even want to be with them once their looks are gone. So <laughs> getting back to the topic at hand, put in the comments what your goals are for this year and I will do my best to respond to each of them and tell you how to best accomplish that and keep in mind there's going to be a lot of overlap. The big buckets of goals that guys typically have are they want a dream girlfriend, like a hot, cool, good chemistry girlfriend in a monogamous relationship or wife, same, same type of category. You want a monogamous relationship with a, with a hot, cool chick. Others of you want to just fuck tons of chicks and more, more quantity with, with as high quality as possible. Okay. That's a good goal to have. Nothing wrong with that. Society tells you that you're an asshole, you're, you're a fucking player or whatever, but we're men and that's what we want. Let's be, let's be real. A lot of us just want that. Um, and then a slight derivation from the last one is we want a harem of regular chicks. Okay. Cause what good is a whole bunch of one night stands if you don't have any emotional connection with any of these girls and you're not going on real dates and you, you can't repeat the good sex that you had. That's my particular one that I like. I think monogamy is unrealistic. I have a video, uh, about my thoughts about marriage on the channel. And just studying evolution, a lot of science, we're not even meant to be monogamous as homo sapiens. It's literally a neurological and anatomical thing. Like they've found species of monkeys that are monogamous and they modify this little part of their brain and they start fucking everyone. And it's 
we're not meant to be like that. What they found evolutionarily and what is what I personally subscribe to is we're meant to have a main chick, like a, you know, I don't know what else to call it as a main chick, a main partner, and then a bunch of side partners. So I typically will run a six to 12 girl rotation. Right now it's 16 girls, which is looking a little bit overwhelming. And I will have one or two main girls. I like to have two sometimes because sometimes there's two really hot, really awesome ones that I have really good chemistry with. So they all kind of like fall in like a hierarchy in terms of how, how much I like each one. But, and there's always new ones coming in that can bump the ones at the bottom of the hierarchy out or bump any of them out for, you know, if they're not showing respect to watch my video on boundaries, having boundaries as a man, because you should have firm principles of what you will and will not permit and what you will and will not tolerate. Um, but that's, that's really what's the natural state of things. And running my machine, so to speak, running the lead machine in terms of managing your leads, running Occam's razor in terms of acquiring the leads. And then I have a whole video on how to build and manage rotations on my channel. Sorry, I'm like calling out a bunch of videos right now. It's kind of a, a new year's recap here about the important topics. Running the whole machine, you can get at least a five girl rotation within a month. And no matter what city you're in, unless you're in a fucking farm town that's desolate and you're, there's, it's really hard to meet girls, that doesn't apply to almost anyone watching, I would assume. Um, you can build that five girl rotation, make the, the hottest, coolest one your main girl, and see each one once a week. And it can fit into pretty much any schedule, no matter how busy you are, unless you're extremely busy. In which case you can settle for one, two, or three girls on rotation. Whatever your schedule permits. But put your goals <clears throat> in the comments and I'll respond to them. Now, expanding on that point, the solution to accomplish most of your goals is more volume. Okay, that doesn't mean just aimless volume, which is what RSD promotes. Like you have all these guys just like running around the cities, just doing like endless amounts of approaches which is generally a waste of time. It has to be with some level of skill to it. Okay. And what I mean by that is I've given you most of the basics on this channel. I have a video on how to set dates to the house. Okay. Do that. So you scheduled the girls coming straight to your house to split a bottle of wine and hang out. I have a video on how to close back of the house. So once you have a date, either from a wine date to the house or you bring a girl back, from a date after a coffee or a drink, you now know how to close at the house. I have a video on how to run your night game interactions. I go through all the details of what to do in a night game interaction. And, and guys email me all the time. They're crushing from this shit because no one's really putting out this level of quality on their free content. This is mostly stuff that's contained in products, but I'm giving you, trust me, my products go much further in depth, but I'm giving you a lot of the key things for free on YouTube. Um, I have an, a day game infield pull breakdown from start to finish on my channel where I'm literally going through the entire interaction from a cold approach on the street all the way to taking her home and I have the same from a nightclub interaction that's in the first half of the night meaning before midnight I think this was at 10 30 or 11 p.m this particular situation and I take the girl home in under 10 minutes and she's a nine she's, so it's a stunner pull in the first half of the night which most coaches and most companies say is not possible and they tell you that you should spend the first half of your night building state and you should spend the first half of your night warming up and the first half of the night doesn't count. And I even show examples from RST Julian, uh, Valentino Cohen and RST Alex, who's now four week natural Alex saying that the first half of the night is, is garbage coming from a guy who's banged a thousand girls. I've fucked just as much, if not more in the first half of the night than I have in the second half of the night. And the reason for that is it's much easier to extract a girl in the first half of the night with with the expectation that you're going to come back to the club, which you do, but oftentimes they don't want to come back because they want to keep banging or sleep over. Um, whereas in the second half of the night, they're kind of committing to leading with you for the whole night and there's no return to the friends and all that shit. So it's a little bit of a tougher sell. So if you watch those videos, you will see start to finish real examples of me taking girls home from a nightclub and from the street. You will know how to frame a date to the house. You will know how to close back of the house. And then my boundaries video gives you like proper alpha mindsets, et cetera, et cetera. My products go much deeper into this shit. But 
without further ado, um, I'm going to wrap this up. Expect a lot higher production value. I'm going to hire a professional video editor. <laughs> For those of you that have been following my channel, I've been doing a lot of the edits on my own, as you can tell. Um, a lot of them are funny, but it's kind of like... Uh, it's like I hired like a like a high school editor or something. I don't have professional editing skills. So I'm gonna hire a professional editor. I'm gonna be using the DSLR camera. I'm gonna buy pro lighting again like I had in the States. And I'll be doing these YouTube lives every Sunday, which should really I really want to like bond and connect with my audience. Like this isn't just about building subscribers and blah blah blah. I want to you know I want to really like solve each of your problems. So like a lot of my videos are me solving them, but for those specific questions and those specific issues that you guys just can't get past or you can't figure out or that you can't learn from the videos that you're watching of mine, Sunday at 4 p.m. EST will be the time where you come on and you ask those, and I will literally see the question and fucking talk to the camera and answer it for you, and then the problem will be solved. So, and I typically charge a very high rate for uh, Skype sessions, but these will be free YouTube lives where it's just free question answering and free value giving so happy new year i wish you guys the best let's make this your best year in pickup yet uh one of my clients that's in my mastermind he's at 198 girls and a lot a lot of that is from the occam's product and the leads machine product he was a beta tester for the leads machine product but he bought occam's over a year ago and, that, and that's what really kind of started cranking the progress he's gonna hit 200 and probably today he has like three new dates set today um but the cool thing is his goal for 2019 is 200 new girls, which is a very ambitious goal. Like I did 245 July 2017, 2018, but that was without an office job. He has an office job. And also most of the years I was doing 100 a year. So to, to try for a goal of 200 a year is going to be tough, but we talk regularly in the mastermind and I'm going to help him get there. But whatever your goal is in pickup, I hope that you accomplish it this year. And I hope that my channel with the regular videos and the YouTube lives and potentially my products, if you try, decide to go that route, will get you to that goal. Okay, so put your goals in the comments below. Let's make this a big year. Fucking blow this shit up. And I will see you guys on my DSLR camera coming very soon this week. Thank you, guys. Take care.